This map shows the distribution of skin color across the world among different populations. From this, you can see that there is a continuous range of skin color. That skin color is not like a one zero yes or no kind of pattern that is expressed. Unlike the flower color in Mendel's experiments with pea plants. In pea plants, the flower color was either white or violet. There was no in between, right? But that is not the case when it comes to the skin color. There are lots of in betweens between the two extreme dark and light colored phenotypes. So such continuous variation of phenotypes are often controlled by more than one gene. That is why the inheritance of these traits is termed polygenic inheritance. From the name itself, you can probably figure out that poly refers to the fact that there are many genes that control the expression of this trait, leading to a continuous variation of the different phenotypes expressed. In polygenic inheritance, since there are more than one genes involved, the additive effects of the genes contribute to the expression of the phenotype. Now, what does this mean? Additive effects of more than one gene? I'll explain that in just a while. Before we move on with polygenic inheritance, here are a few more traits that are controlled by polygenic inheritance: height, eye color, and skin color in human beings. Let us learn about polygenic inheritance in a little bit more detail with an example, and I'll also explain what the additive effect means. Consider this trait in wheat. the kernel color say it is determined by these three genes the total influence of these three genes is what controls the kernel color in wheat the three genes have these alleles one dominant and one recessive now for the kernel color to be expressed the dominant allele is the allele that produces the pigment so if the dominant allele is there then the pigment is produced and the kernel is colored if there is a recessive allele then no pigment is produced it can be thought of like 1 0 the pigment expressed by the dominant allele imparts a dark red color in the kernel so if there are all dominant alleles then the kernel color will be dark red if there are only recessive alleles small a small b and small c then that means that the pigment is not produced at all and the color is white but what if there is one dominant allele and one recessive allele then an intermediate phenotype is produced because some pigment is still produced by the dominant allele but no pigment is produced by the recessive allele right so an intermediate phenotype is produced which sort of gives the kernel a pinkish color like this so if you consider this cross between two heterozygotes then this would be the phenotype of the plants the kernel color would be pink in color because these three dominant alleles would produce some pigment and the total additive effects of these three genes the collective effects would produce an intermediate pinkish color pigment which is what is seen here so here we have the two plants which are pinkish in color and we are going to cross them to obtain this punnett square now this is quite a huge punnett square right if you want take a minute pause the video try to understand the different alleles formed and how the combinations are written down here this is what i mean when i say the additive effects of the dominant alleles are visible because if there are all dominant alleles if the six alleles are dominant then the combined effect of each of these genes is going to give the dark red the darkest red kernel color in this genotype in contrast if you take a look at this square here which has all six recessive alleles no pigment is produced resulting in a white color phenotype white color kernel this means that there is no additive effect here because there is no dominant gene to secrete the pigment If you take a look at the other squares here you can see that the colors are reducing in intensity. First let's focus on this square. This has 1 2 3 4 5 
dominant alleles so the combined additive effects of these five dominant alleles of these three genes is going to give a slightly less dark red because there is still one recessive allele small b in this case small a in this case and small c in this case right there is still one recessive allele that's not contributing to the pigment color but the remaining dominant alleles are contributing to the combined effect of the phenotype which would result in a slightly less dark kernel these three rows and these three columns would result in a slightly less dark kernel if you take a look at these squares here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 these squares here they have 1 2 3 four dominant alleles which means that the combined effect of the three genes the three dominant genes is going to result in a slightly less darker red and as the number of dominant alleles decreases take the case of this square it has 1 2 3 dominant alleles then the intensity of the red color is also going to decrease because of the less additive effects found in these genotypic combinations so this is going to be a lighter pink this where there are only two dominant alleles is going to be an even lighter pink and here where there's only one dominant allele this is going to be the lightest of the pink colors so this is what i mean when i say the additive effects are responsible for the phenotype being expressed the combined effect of the dominant alleles is going to affect the phenotype so if you were to write down the ratio for the different phenotypes because writing down the ratio for the different genotypes would just be mind boggling if you write down the ratio for the different phenotypes this is what you'd get so this one here is for the six dominant alleles this one six dominant alleles and this six here is for the genotype that has five dominant alleles this 15 here is for the genotype that has four dominant alleles these ones the 20 here is for the genotype that has three dominant alleles these ones and this 15 again here is for the genotype that has two dominant alleles this one for one dominant allele and this last one is for the genotype with zero dominant alleles now if you were to plot the different phenotypes and their frequency in a graph this is what you would get here in the x axis you have the number of dominant alleles and on the y axis you have the frequency of these phenotypes in the population now you can fit the number of each phenotype under a bell curve that would give a continuous variation of the traits there is no one or zero trait it's a continuous variation of traits something else you have to remember when it comes to polygenic inheritance is that it's not only the genes that control the expression of these traits but the environment also plays a huge role in these traits for example with the case of human skin color the environment the exposure to sunlight plays a huge role in how the trait is expressed